Greetings, everybody. Please get your King James Bible and turn to the 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 in your King James Bible. The uh, I'm going to kind of skip the second chapter of the book of Acts because I covered that in the book of Joel. I said that I was going to cover every place where the day of the Lord is in the Bible. And being that second, the second chapter of the book of Acts was covered in the book of Joel, I'm going to kind of, I'm not really skipping over it. I'm just kind of, well, I guess I am not really skipping over it, but I've already covered that in, in the book of Joel because the uh, Acts chapter two, Peter directly quotes from Joel. So I, reference them together. So, so we're going to go to the next place. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. This is a short one. I'm not going to make a big, big to-do out of this one. Verse 1, it is co reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. So I don't believe this guy is playing around with his mother. It's probably like a stepmom or something like that. I'm not sure. So there's somebody in the church hanging around that's messing around with his father's wife. Verse 2, And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. You know, there was a admonition in the Old Testament about who you could have relations with. And, you know, brothers and sisters weren't supposed to play around. You weren't supposed to play around with your aunts, uh, your mothers, your fathers. And, obviously, this is not something that should be done. And it says, And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Huh. Uh, does this sound like the Old Testament was done away with and nailed on the cross? No. It says, For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already. What? Paul's going to judge? Don't they always tell us, judge not lest ye be judged? Yeah, but it also says, judge righteous judgment. Because if you condemn somebody for smoking a cigarette, and you are an excessive drinker, you know, I, you know what, what can you say? Judge righteous judgment. For, ver for I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that hath, done, that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, am I spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan. Wow. That's some pretty harsh stuff. The guy that's messing around with his father's wife. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Wow. That the spirit may, not shall be, not will, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Let's read that again. To deliver, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Huh. The day of the Lord Jesus. Did you know that Jesus is Lord? So how can the, the day of the Lord and the day of Christ be different? I, I can't figure that one out. Verse 6. 
your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven. And people messing around with their father's wife is definitely leaven. Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. You know, if you've never read the book of Exodus, this wouldn't even make sense to you. People that tell you not to read the Old Testament because it's only for the Jews, well, they're deceivers or they're deceived. What can I tell you? And here it is, Paul's telling us, therefore let us keep the feast. What feast? Passover. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Huh. See, in verse 7 it says, Purge out therefore the old leaven. Get rid of the old stuff that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, there, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle, that's a letter, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, covetous or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. You know, we're supposed to uh, witness to these people, but, you know, we're not supposed to be yoked with them. So, verse 12, For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves, that wicked person. In other words, when this person shows up at church, you ought to tell him, hey, you're not welcome here. Beat it. Hit the street. So, uh, in 2 Corinthians 6, 17, it says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So, uh, so, but we're supposed to judge in righteousness. Okay? But, what can I tell you? Uh, it's really something. In Luke 6.37, it says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, that's a very important thing, forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. In John 7.24, it says, Judge not according to a, the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Hmm. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, Dare any of you, dare any of you, having a matter against another, uh, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? You see, when two believers are at odds and instead of filing a lawsuit before the Masonic judges, we're supposed to go to the church. and Both parties should... Agree to whatever the church says. But uh, no, we don't do that anymore. Dear any of you having a matter against another, another, go to law, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. 
Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Wow, did you know that the believers are going to judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. In other words, the, the people that are considered the lowest in the church, those are the ones that should be doing the judging for these matters of law. So, how's that for uh, talking about judgment? I'll tell you what. I, uh, the uh, unbelievers always love to throw out, judge not lest ye be judged. Well, you know what? If you're a murderer and you're going to condemn somebody because they're a thief, well, pfft, like, like Paul said, purge out the old leaven and murder and thieving and idolatry and witchcraft and all that. That's the old leaven. Get rid of it. And believe me, I'm as guilty as anybody when it comes to this stuff. So, all right, well, that's the end of this lesson. I'm going to uh, continue on to the next lesson. We are going to go to, let's see, where are we going? We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And uh, just remember something. Day of the Lord Jesus. Day of the Lord Jesus. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.